Welcome to Bayou Time. I'm Jacob DeGate, and it's now my pleasure to be joined by Corey Henry, who is the chief of the Homa Fire Department. Thank you very much for joining us. Thanks for having me. Uh, I, kn I know you come from, from good stock when, you, when your uh, uncle is Mr. Sue Henry, <laughs> longtime uh, public, in this area, public servant in this area. But uh, I guess this being the winter time, uh, you know, of course, that brings uh, its own challenges with people trying to to heat their houses uh, and that can cause issues. Is there any safety tips out there that you'd like to, to give the public? Yeah, well, for the first thing is we need to, to make sure that we do have working smoke alarms in our, house, in our homes, depending on, you know, it doesn't really matter how we heat them. For the first thing is that we just have working smoke alarms. Uh, most of your fatalities are gonna happen just because they didn't have a smoke alarm and people didn't realize there was a fire when they were sleeping. So that, that would be the first suggestion I would have, is just make sure you have those, preferably on every, any room that you're sleeping in, um, and any level, if you have a multi-level house, at least you have a smoke okay, alarm. Because that's, that's one of the questions I have, because my wife's been on me to buy some more smoke alarms, because we only, when we moved into a new house, you only had two, and I think that, that's important. You want it in every room that somebody's gonna be that, sleeping. Yes, sir, especially everybody's gonna be sleeping. And also make sure with that, when you buy the smoke alarms, that. They, they come two different ways. You can you can replace the batteries. So mm -hmm. if if you can replace the batteries, you want to replace them every twice a year. Every time you change the clocks, change the batteries, or you can get the ones that have ten year batteries on them. So you have you have a few options there. Okay, and then uh, I guess another thing. Not only uh, the fire alarms, I guess carbon monoxide can also be an issue as well. As it is. Uh, if you have any type of gas appliances, you have the possibility of having carbon monoxide leaks and the danger with carbon monoxide is that you can't really smell it mm -hmm. you can't smell it at all you can't see it you can't feel it so it's just something by the time you you're experiencing symptoms you've already been exposed to carbon monoxide and uh again some people of course you know over the storm um, we've had a lot of people without power sometimes power that they're, they're repairing power and people start up those generators too and that can create uh, carbon monoxide. Yes, as well. the exhaust from any type of engine is going to create some type of carbon monoxide. So we want to make sure we keep those away from the structures. Structures, and I believe, uh, luckily, well, luckily over here we don't have a lot of snow. Where, I, but I saw recently they had some some people up north somewhere where a bunch of people on a road got stopped, and they were stopped in their cars for a long time because it was it was snowing and they couldn't get to the road. But uh, being it's cold outside, some people tried. I like to sit in their cars but if they're not moving that can also create a it, issue. it can create if you, you know there's no wind um, or if you're in your garage and you're running your car where there's no ventilation that carbon monoxide can build up sure okay uh, another thing that the, uh, is a, a big issue when when it's cold uh, some people don't have a central heat or some people that their, their central heat just isn't put enough enough out enough power that they uh, like to run space heaters as well and I believe you're seeing in New York City if you watch the news a little bit uh, they had uh, about 19 people die in a high rise and it all started from uh, I believe a space heater fighter uh, space heater uh, that, that malfunctioned a little bit can you tell me uh, you know some of the types of problems that you can have with those well so if you're going to use a space heater you want to make sure first of all that it is some type of um, approved heater from like under underwriters laboratory or an organization like that Second thing is you want to make sure it has either a timer or a thermostat on it. So if it overheats, it'll shut itself off, or it won't continuously just continue to produce heat. Um, you want to make sure that it's at least three feet around from anything else. You want to make sure it's on a flat surface and not where it can be kicked over or uh, plugged into an extension cord. You want to plug it directly into the wall. Now there's, uh I guess different types of space heaters. Is there any that's more safe? I know you have the radiator types, or you have the you know the kinds that just pump out uh, heat from heat, a heating element. Mm -hmm. Is there any other uh, type that's more I guess safe than the other type? Preferably anything that something couldn't touch the element mm -hmm. and catch on fire. So you want to look at that. Also, you have to be careful um, when they heat up. You know, sometimes the outside, depending on what kind of heat element you have, can make the outside of the heater hot. So it can cause burns. Okay. Um, now, w with the damage that we, we've seen to a lot of people's houses uh, with the hurricane, you have, I guess, electrical components that are, that are in there uh, that could also receive or be exposed to elements, cause some issues there. Has that been a problem at all? Have you seen any fires starting that, or is there anything that people can do to make sure to avoid those type of? Fortunately, issue. I'm sorry. Fortunately, we shouldn't. We haven't had any types of fires um, with that yet. 
Um, and the thing you can do is just make sure if you have any, any exposed wires, you want to shut the breaker off to those and not use, you know, that circuit. Okay. Okay. And just, just shut the entire breaker off? For that circuit, yes. Okay. All right. That's good. Now, uh, as far as the, I know we have a, a, a lot of fire stations out there throughout Terrebonne and Parish, but uh, as far as the Home of Fire Department, how, how did y'all buildings fare and everything throughout the uh, Hurricane Ida? We have seven different buildings, uh, four which were manned 24 hours a day. All of our buildings sustained damage. Um, some were major where we actually are not operating out of the station, and some um, just roof damage. So we're, we're still trying to build back ourselves. Okay. So, but... Uh, and what, which particular, I guess, areas are, are the ones that are not being manned at the, this time? So our hardest hit area was out in on the air base. Mm -hmm. So we have since moved that engine company over to the TARC complex where they're stationed at now. So we're going to look at rebuilding yeah. in that area. But even though, I guess, for the public's uh, benefit, even though that they may not be in that uh, building, they're still covering that area we, and be are, able to respond. To yes, we're still covering that area. Our response times are basically going to be about the same because they're – they're maybe about a half mile up from where they were. Okay. Well, again, uh, we thank you very much for coming on and, and joining us. And I uh, know that uh, hopefully uh, people out there will listen to all the, the tips that were given and make sure to keep them and their families safe. Thank all you. Right. Stay tuned for more right here on HTV.